Hello, it's Denise with Minty Green Mama, and I am back for day 11 of the 31 days of Tarot 2019. I had to think about that for a second here. So today is the Oracle decks that I want to work with more in 2019. And I thought that this was going to be a really quick and easy one um, because I haven't been using Oracle decks that much, much. But when I sat down to get out the Oracle decks I want to work with in 2019, there's more than I thought there would be. So I have nine, <laughs> nine that I really want to work with in 2019. And I'm going to start with one um, that I have uh, talked about recently, and that is the Baleen Oracle. And then this is the book that I purchased to learn how to use that oracle, and it's um, The Secrets of the Baleen Oracle by Sylvie Steinbach. And um, it is a pretty nice sized book, but the words, you know, it's a fairly large print, um, so it's I think it's going to be a nice read. And um and yeah, I just this kind of popped up on on Amazon, and I thought I never heard of the Boolean Oracle before. And, uh, you know, how have I never heard of that? And I thought it sounded really interesting. It seems like it's somewhat similar to Lenormand. Um, so I'm interested in, in learning more and seeing what the differences and the similarities are. And then, um, of course, I also have the, I had to buy the Oracle deck. And now this is the Spanish, um, it's, it's a Spanish uh, published deck. That's the blue card. <laughs> Um, because I could not find one, um, an English one. And so this just, it had a, it actually came with a book, a book and deck set. Um, the book is in Spanish and my Spanish is not that good. So I got the Sylvie Steinbeck book. Um, yeah, it's an interesting looking deck. Just like a very kind of, I don't want to say crudely drawn because, I mean, but it's just a very like simple um, illustrations and with an astrological symbol, um, like up at the top and, you know, a number. So, yeah. So I'm uh, interested to kind of play around with this and see how that goes. So that's something new for me that I'd like to start working with in 2019. And I'm um, kind of following up with that is the, um, the Burning Serpent Oracle out uh, the book by uh, Rachel Pollack and um, and then Robert M. Place is the artwork. And um, conceived by Rachel Pollack and Robert M. Place and designed by Robert M. Place. So this is, um, from what I understand, basically a Lenormand deck. Um, and the Lenormand is something that I worked with uh, quite a bit a long time ago and set aside for... Um, a while and I have not really worked with it much since although I have um, started to again and I, I kind of like picked it up and then set it back aside so I think I'm I'm ready this year to kind of pick it back up and I thought this one is a lovely deck and of course I'm a huge fan of both Rachel Pollock and Robert in place so I thought this is where I'm gonna kind of start and go from there so this is the Burning Serpent Oracle. And so my next couple of decks are um, moon-based decks. And one of my main goals, like spiritual goals in 2019, is to learn to work more um, with the phases of the moon um, and just just to work more with lunar energy. And so I got the Queen of the Moon Oracle. I'm super happy that I got this one. I love the illustrations. The box is, box is gorgeous. It's um, Rockpool Publishing, yes. And it's by Stacy DeMarco. And um, the illustrator is Kinga Britch, Britschke, Britschke, maybe, perhaps. And, um, it just it has a lot of good information in here. It's not a lot. Like, I'm not going to learn to work with the moon just by this oracle, but I feel like um, I feel like it's a good place to start. I actually have um, card two, which is the new moon um, card on my alt right now because um, today, the day I'm filming this, yesterday was the new moon. And I'm trying to start to to work with that 
more even now before I even <laughs> no even before I even learn anymore. But I thought this would be a nice deck to work with, and it's gorgeous. I absolutely love that. Ooh, self love. Love that. So, ooh. So yeah, gorgeous deck, and um, kind of fits in with my one of my major areas of study this year and that kind of goes along with this next one which is the moon oracle by carolyn smith and john ostrup um this one has been around for quite some time i believe it came out in 2000 um so all the uh, moon tables in the back are are out of date um but I don't even know what they mean at this point anyway, so I'm, I'm still really just learning. Um, so it just it has a lot of good information about each of the cards. I feel like this one, um, I really need the book. This isn't an oracle that I could just, whereas the Queen of the Moon oracle had some like keywords on it, like nourishment and self-love and that kind of thing. I couldn't, for example, I don't think draw um, these cards and just you know, get a good grasp of what the intended meaning is. So even though they're gorgeous cards. And they have a lot of good, um, like, goddess energy in here, which is amazing because I love um, to work, you know, with goddess energy, and I feel like it just goes so well with the moon. <laughs> I feel like the lighting in here is really blue today. I don't know what that's about. Anyway, it uh, changes when I put the cards up. So that's, um, that is the Moon Oracle. And I'm not sure how many cards are in here. But anyway, it's about this thick. These are the backs. And I'm not sure if it's still in print. Um, this is, I purchased this as a used, used deck. So... I just got this recently and I bought it as you know part of my learning more about working with the moon in 2019 so I'm very excited to start working with that and now this is my crystal deck that I want to work with more um, in 2019 and that is the crystal uh, Deva cards I believe that's I always I always said diva but I think it's Deva and this is by Cindy Watlington and I got this a long time ago, long, long time ago. And um, so I don't know if this one is still in print either. I don't ever really see this one much. But what I like about this is um, it does have some spreads. It, um, like the mountain spread, higher consciousness. Um, and then it has a lot. So for each card, it has several pages of information some more than others, but at least two, generally speaking, like um, Amethyst has, you know, like a good couple of pages front and back. So you get a lot of information and the way that it's written, um, the messages are written as if the stone, the consciousness of that stone or, you know, crystal is talking to you with the message. So it's kind of like a different, I just like that spin on it. It's like, the spirit of the crystal is talking to me and um the cards are pretty big i would say like this this is the queen of the moon oracle you know it's like um comes up over the top of the box by that much so if that helps you at all i just don't have a regular tarot deck sitting right here right now i guess i do hold on mm. So that is like, um, this is my Navigator Tarot of the Mystic Sea. It's a pretty basic tarot, you know, sized U.S. Games card. And so it's quite a bit taller. That's the main feature I feel like of these cards is they're just super tall. Not necessarily wide, but just tall. But, um, but yeah, just like a basic photograph, the name of the stone and the like key, key word. And there's 44. So not a whole lot. The backs are kind of simple, but I just, it's nice to have them sitting out and the, 
I think the, the important thing about this deck is just taking the time to read the message from the guidebook. So I think that that because it's a couple of pages, I just haven't found myself taking the time to do that. And so I fell out of using this deck. I haven't really used this deck for probably a couple of years at least. Um, you know, maybe pull it out once or twice here and there. But for the most part, for the last several years, it's been unfortunately not it's not being appreciated. So I'm taking it out and I'm going to be using this one um, as my main, you know, crystal deck this, this year. All right. And so another one that I got, um, I'm not sure how long I've had this. Been at least a year or so um, is the return of spirit oracle by Cheryl Lee harnish and i'm a really big fan of her artwork it's fractal images and um i the the messages are really interesting but they seem to be like on point you get this little guidebook so it's not a whole lot like let's say you know you get like a little page and a half here for each card but um but they've been really helpful for me in the past and I just don't know why I, I've had them out, like I've had them sitting out where I can look at them, but I just haven't been using them and pulling cards, you know, from the stack. So there's so much reflection. I don't know if you can appreciate the gorgeousness. Oh, this is my favorite one in the deck, Starseed. <laughs> so uh, this is one that I'd like to work with more. There's not a whole lot of information in the guidebook, but I feel like you can get some good um, intuitive messages from this. Also, some good like meditation, the good meditation um, cards. So, ooh, gotta show this one. Surfacing, like the keywords are just really interesting on this. Um, you know, I don't know, like voice. And for whatever reason, I don't know, this is weird, but like I see this and I'm like, yeah, voice. I totally get that. I don't know. It's just a gorgeous deck and I love the artwork, but I also think the messages are kind of interesting. Oh, I've gotten this deck all mixed up, but that's okay. I'll fix it later. Okay, I have two, down to two left. Okay, so the second to last one is the Galactic Heritage Cards. So it's very like alien, you know, um, which is my one of my things I like to work with, uh, that kind of energy. Um, and it is a huge, huge deck. Who, who publishes this? Light Technology Publishing. And this is by uh, Lisa Royal Holt. Illustrations by David Cow. And... Um, so it has like a pretty nice guidebook. I also believe that um, Lisa or Lissa, I don't know how you say your name, has a series of YouTube videos that go over the cards in more in you know more depth, which I would love to check out. It's just it's such a, a thick <laughs> deck. It's one of those like it's split in two, so it needs a new it needs a new home. But let's see, so the backs are like very. <laughs> Very interesting looking. The whole deck is very interesting looking. Um, stop it. So. It's kind of, it's like abstract, but you still get like a picture of what's going on. And um, it's got its own whole little system of like... Uh, I don't know, like I read over the beginning of the book when I first got this, um, I think it's been like close to a year since I purchased this deck and it was really interesting. And um, you, know, you can just pull a card and then read about it in the guidebook and it can work like that. But the more you, you read about the system of how she developed the cards and all this, um, the more I think you can appreciate it and get better readings. And in fact, I don't think she has I want to say there's not like a specific way to use the cards in this book. Um, oh yeah, she does have spreads in here. Okay. So 
So, but I did see like, um, I believe a YouTube video it had kind of gone over like using the deck. So anyway, it's just, it's a really fun deck. It's really interesting. Like this has like almost like, I don't know if you can see like the, the color almost has like a texture to it. Interesting. But there's, I mean, there's meaning behind all the different like colors and, and all that stuff. And they're grouped into different categories. So anyway, I haven't really gone into it all, but I'm really excited to kind of work with it some more and read over the guidebook again um, and, and use it because that's super fun. And then the last one is the Aval Avalonian Oracle by Jenna Tillendrew. Illustrated by Emily Brunner. I'm not sure if I'm saying anybody's names correctly there, but um, but yeah, this one it also has kind of like its own system. And I started to read the book. I didn't. Um, I didn't finish reading the book, and so I kind of put it away because <laughs> because it's its own whole thing, and um, I just didn't feel like I had the time to go through it. There's different like cycles and this journey to Avalon just a little symbol but um but I'm just really into like Arthurian legend and Avalon right now I'm reading the Mist of Avalon which I think is a wonderful uh woman based you know uh it's the Arthurian legend told from a woman's perspective kind of and I just really appreciate that um and I think it's amazing so I'm rereading it. I read that when I was in high school and I'm rereading it now and it's still amazing. And so that's what kind of drew me to using this deck. But I have not been able to, to read the book and figure out the best way to use it right now. Um, Cause I know like these things have meanings, like the little things outside the borders and the names of the cards and all that. But I think until I read the book, I'm not gonna really, um, be able to use the cards like this is station of emergence and station of resolution so it's one of those uh figure out the system you know read the book and then use the cards type of a deal oh my gosh this box is not cooperating so anyway so that is my, I believe that was nine decks that, Oracle decks, that I want to work with more in 2019. So, yeah, I actually surprised myself with that one. <laughs> so anyway, that's it. And I will um, catch y'all later. And I love to see everyone's videos. And I hope to talk to you soon. All right, bye.